Hello, and this is the third episode of our series on authentic assessment. And today we're going to be talking about multiple choice questions. That's the buzzword and everybody's thinking about how do I frame multiple questions so that I get them right. Okay. So we'll begin by talking about what are the criticisms and what is such a problem in framing multiple choice questions. The advantages we already know, but what are some of the disadvantages is what we need to talk about. So I love that gym, you know, shall I do this? Shall I do that? Tic-tac-toe, here I go. If I miss, I take this. That's the way children attack multiple choice questions. Okay, and many adults as well. The one of the problems is that if the, if just by some lucky guesses, the students can get it right. So it's impossible to know really whether they really know. That's one of the things which is going against MCQs if they are not framed well. Then if there's a careful reading that students really do, and they might just... The, reveal, the answer can reveal itself because one of the thing is that the answer is right there. It's hidden in, in, the, in all the items, but it's right there. And therefore, they, they might get an advantage of that. The third argument against MCQ has been that there are always some distractors or some wrong answers in the three or four options that you give in an MCQ. And what might happen is that this misinformation can actually misguide the students, especially if they are working very hard to crack this question. You know, if they're just making a random guess, it's a different thing. But many of our students work hard and then they persuade themselves that this is the right answer. And therefore they can end up with certain misconceptions regarding some conceptual understanding that we're trying to get them to arrive at. Okay? So I'd like to draw your attention to four common clues that we need to keep in mind when we are framing multiple choice questions. The first one is the length of the answer. Now you might wonder what that is. But what's, been, what's being suggested here by those who are working on MCQ, and I've been reading a lot of papers on this, is that if there is a longer answer, it has got more words in the given four options, then students might feel that this is the right answer. And so they tend to click on that. So we must make sure that all the four answers and all the four options that we give are of the same length. Then there is an issue of grammar. Okay. So what happens that suppose there is a question which by, by mistake or sometimes deliberately, a teacher writes it with incorrect grammar, then the students will discard that. They will feel that this is the wrong grammar, so this could not be the right answer. So we need to be also careful about grammar and construction of the questions. Here is something to be noted that sometimes in order to really give a distractor, we might end up giving something silly or which is obviously incorrect. And therefore, that is also something that the students can say, hey, this can't be the answer. So these are some of the problems. However, one more, op one more thing that we need to be careful about when we are crafting MCQs is that never ever write none of the above. Because what's the point of saying none of the above? You know, you don't want students to waste their time by asking them, to look at everything and then say it's none of the above. So these are four clues that we need to keep in mind when we are framing multiple choice questions. Here is a leading slide which will lead us into at least one thing that we should not do when we are framing MCQs. So consider this multiple choice question that somebody said. Okay, you're using an outdoor wood burning sediment pit. And therefore, which is the following that you should not do so that fire doesn't spread everywhere? One, should you burn softer rather than harder woods? Second, should you douse the fire with water if it happens? Third, should you make sure that there aren't any other combustible materials around? Now, as you can see, the third one, I mean, in the above, there is one thing that the C is actually students might tend to click on it. Why? Because it's got longer and it's got more details and they might feel that this seems to be the right answer. So how do you correct this? So what you do is you fix it like this. And this is one nice uh, guide for when we are framing our MCQs, when we are giving them the four options. So here is a fix to that one. First, first one is burn softer than harder woods, douse the fire. And the third one, we've just cut it. And we said, remove nearby flammable materials. That's one way of looking at not having any kind of a discrepancy in the items that you give for them to select from. Okay. So this is what I have done. We just eliminated that, made it shorter so that it is now all the same length and they need to battle with all the three options equally. Okay? So I have some examples 
from a couple of subjects to tell you about what would we do if we were to frame MCQs on this. And I, I also want to thank ACID for allowing me to take some questions from some of their very, very old papers. Okay? So Darshan is a boy who found a bird. Now the bird eats, so prompts are given, eats grains and cooked food, avoids hawks and falcons, and prefers narrow and sheltered spaces for nesting. So these are the clues which are already given. Okay. Now here is the question that I might set based on these clues, based on these prompts. I'm saying, so where will this bird really make a home? Where is it like to be? Okay. Where is it likely to be? Would it be on a high branch of a tree open to sky? And the students begin to think. Would it be on the soft sand behind a pond? Would it be in an isolated cave in the forest? Or would it be hidden in a windowsill of a building? So you need to make the right critical thinking here. So that's why I'm, I'm a champion of MCQ, because if you're framing them correctly, you're also encouraging higher order thinking skills. Rote memory will not work in this kind of a question, as you will see. The student has to make the connection that cooked food has to be available, hawks and falcons have to be avoided, sheltered places have to be given, and therefore, what would be the right answer? in a hidden wall uh, windowsill of a building. Let's try one more. Another one in science, okay? So this is a very common one in the primary syllabus and I've taken from the syllabus so that it drives over point when you are framing your own MCQs. It's a very interesting activity, really. Teachers must sit together and frame them. And if you have any questions, do put them in the box here. This video is timestamped, so you can quickly navigate to whichever portions of your are of your interest. And do ask us questions. We can give you reading material and further exemplars on how to frame MCQs. So the number of rats in a cornfield had suddenly gone up. After some time, it was controlled naturally. Okay, what could have been the reason? Now, here again, higher order thinking skills are at play because the students are watching the picture, watching the food chain, watching how the arrows are going from one to the other, and then deciphering the answer. So the rote memory will not work here. Is there an increase in the amount of grass? I hope you're also thinking before the right answer is revealed. Is there an increase in the number of hawks? Is there an increase in the number of frogs and grasshoppers? Or is there a decrease in the number of snakes and hawks? Hmm? What's the right answer? And the KBC kind of green light comes up on the decrease in number of snakes and hawks. Now here also, I've deliberately done this. The three prompts have increased, increased, increased. One has decreased. Students may click on that thinking that this is different. But when we are framing the questions, we should also make sure that such errors do not happen. A deliberate error, the right answer, but it should not have had decrease. Some other way of framing the right kind of a prompt. Okay, let's go further. What about language? Okay, there are some clues here as well. Just, you know, to take across the subject so that every teacher who's watching my video feels engaged and you are engaged with Chikshangan Education Initiatives who brings you top class content. Okay, so... This is a simpler one because earlier, earlier ideas and hints about keep the answers the same length, etc, etc. Here it is grammar. So already the prompts would be of the similar size and similar kind. Okay, The letters of which word can be arranged to form, rearranged to form this sentence, rest, sam. Okay, And I'm giving four which are the same, matters, streams, stammers, as well as smarter. Now, no rough work allowed, okay? No pencil and no doing an anagram or anything. But you are thinking very fast. This rest Sam doesn't have a double T. It doesn't have a double M. It doesn't even have a double R or smarter. And therefore, the answer is streams. You're allowing them faster thinking about vocabulary and how do words and letters play out. Let's do one more, okay? In language, a group of children went on a camp. The camp leader divide the children into group of six each, as can be seen. Okay, there are the six children. And then he said, put the names in alphabetical order. Now, there is a distractor here. Okay, what is the distractor? Tilak is the leader of the group. So the students can think that Tilak's name should come first. Now, it just so happens that I have taken that. Which name should Tilak enter, enter third in his list? So there are six there. Which one should he enter? Third in his list, that's what is being asked. But I'm not giving all the six options. I'm saying Tilak, Thomas, Tripti, and Tejas. Out of these four, which should be third in the list? If these four are taken, okay? 
And very clearly, they no need to know the dictionary entries of the alphabet. Is it I first or H first or E first or R first? Because T is common. And therefore, therefore the answer is Thomas. Okay. So that was one more example in, in language. And let's go to mathematics. Okay. So I wanted to show that in every subject, through MCQ, we can encourage higher order thinking skills. So don't believe that MCQ encourages only rote memorization. The problem is not with the question. The problem is how we set it. Okay. So here are two pencils, P and Q, as you can see on the screen. Okay. This is a comment. I think maybe you've come across this, but let me say that anyway. Which of this is true about the two pencils P and Q shown above? Now, I'm going to make sure that all my prompts are of the same size. P is 1 cm longer than Q. P is 2 cm longer than Q. P is 6 cm longer than Q. And Q is 5 cm shorter than P. Again, a distractor. Students might, if they are not calculating properly, they might select D. Because Q is 5 cm shorter. That starts with Q. It's a different kind of a prompt. And they may say that, oh, maybe it's this, you know. But no, as we know, this correct answer is right here. P is one centimeter longer than Q. One more in mathematics. Okay. So here are four different objects. All right. As you can see on the screen. And these are all solid objects. And then we go ahead and we do some weighing with these objects. So these are the three weighings that we do. We don't do four. But then we ask this kind of a question. What can we say about the weights of these objects? Now mark it. There is no rote memorizing here. So I am actually doing this episode to encourage everyone to frame critical thinking, multiple choice questions. Multiple choice is, going to, is here. It's going to stay. The National Education Policy talks a lot about it also. So therefore, we need to make sure that we're doing it the right way. So again, prompt A. This is heavier than this. So we've got four. Which is the correct answer here? Okay, We've got the solid shapes. We are saying we have not weighed all of them. The students really, really have to calculate and they have to look at what's given. Just three. The data points are three. Then they've got to make sense. Of, therefore, what is heavier than what? And finally, they will get to the answer of the ball is actually heavier than the cylinder. They have to get to that, even though that's not weighed that way over here. And which is why we say that multiple choice questions is a great idea when we are doing authentic assessment as long as they are framed with all these clues and the do's and the do nots in mind. So in order to improve, what do we do? Write your questions above the recall level so that it doesn't become a rote memorization kind of lowest level of Bloom's taxonomy question. Take it higher than that. Let it not be a very trivial kind of knowledge that you're testing. Right? The questions that ask people to make decisions, solve problems as they would in real life. I showed you some examples of that, about how they were making a decision to come to the real, the right answer. Don't provide any length, grammar, ridiculousness or none of the above or all of the above kind of clues. Make sure that you, it's, everything is very standardized and there is no room for them guessing. Okay, try to do that. Make sure all the incorrect answers because we give incorrect answers only right so that they are make sure that they are plausible don't let them be wild and in your imagination and wrong let them be very plausible believable that's what is being said here make the answer choices the same length and the same depth same depth is important they need to be thinking equally for everyone so multiple choice questions are sometimes very easy to guess of course that's the argument against it but this isn't the fault of multiple choice questions, but the fault of writing them poorly. So my attempt has been to, to give some ideas on how do we write multiple choice questions. We'd love to share more material with you through our comment section if you ask for it. We'll be happy to give you more sample questions or, or more tips on how can you do MCQs. At the moment, thank you for watching. And if you like what we present, do like our channel and do subscribe to Shikshangan Education Initiatives. We're trying to bring you top class content. Thanks.